lesson three, so we're staying with the permutation we did in lesson two, but we're adding with restrictions and repetitions. So when it said distinct and stuff like that, it talks about repeating stuff, which we'll get to at the end. Okay, but we're also going to talk about some restrictions. So in how many ways, so we're just going to talk about, we're going to use fundamental accounting principle and our permutations. We're going to go kind of through both here. But it says, how many ways can all the letters of the word orange be arranged if there's no restrictions? So straight up, how do you figure that one out? If there's oranges, no restrictions, just how many ways can I order it? Right, seven letters, so seven factorial. That's all I have to worry about, seven factorial. So that's 5,040. So with no restrictions, 5,040. Okay. If the first letter has to be N, so then you go, okay, so N is locked in. How many digits are left or letters are left? Six. So it's essentially one times six factorial. Okay. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing and really takes, uh, I was kind of wrap my head around this as well. I'll try to explain the best I can. The vowels must be together in order of O, A, and E. Okay, and so what that means is, is somewhere, it doesn't have to be in the front, but O, A, and E have to be grouped together in that order. There's only one way you can group them that way, correct? Okay, here's a little bit confusing part. So if I have O, A, E paired, how many other letters are there left? Four, good. So the thing you need to think about is that I have four missing spaces. Think about OAE as an individual letter. I know that seems weird, but what I'm saying is, could OAE go here? Yeah, so it can go in any of these spots. So what I'm saying is, is that you essentially have, to start, you have five options. It can be OAE or R. N, G, or S. So you have five options. Does that make sense? And you kind of see it here. They kind of write the one that's locked in. But what I was getting confused on when I do this, I think it should be four factorial, but it's five. Because this is still an option. Okay, so having the group of OAE is an option because it can go in all five of those spots. Okay, so again, if you aren't all can write out here, it actually makes it a little easier maybe. So you have R, you have N, you have G, and you have S, okay? And then you have O, A, and E. So you have option one, option two, option three, option four, option five. So your first selection, you can choose one of those five. And that's five, four, three, two, one, so it's five factorial. Okay, so 120 ways that you can put O, A, E together within those Seven, did seven spots. Okay, we're going to talk about kind of a couple of similar here. So, okay, this one. How many arrangements of the letters of the, from the word brains are the vowels together? So, how many ways to put the vowels together? Oh, which of the vowels? A and I. And so, this one said they must be in order. What does it say about these ones? Just says together. Good. So that means it's A, I, or I, A. So essentially we're going to do, you can do one of them and times it by two, right? You can do one of them and times it by two. So here's the thing. We know A, I will be together. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, four. So then we have what here? Five factorial. Yep. Five factorial times two because it'd be five factorial for the bottom as well, because it's either, it's uh, these are the two ways of having vowels together. Okay, another way you can do it, okay, um, see how, like if it was three, that gets kind of like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of cumbersome to like write out all the different ways you can put those together, does that make sense? Like you, you'd, be, you'd be doing more than you need to. Simply, how many ways can you order AI? It'd be two factorial, right? Two letters for two spots. So you can do five factorial times two factorial. But what I'm saying, if it was three letters we could mix up, you would do three factorial, okay? This one, two factorial, it works because two times one is just two, so the two works as well. So you, because that's the only two ways you can do it, okay? 
What I'm saying is if you have a group of letters that need to be paired, but it can be in any order, you can change that to three factorial or four factorial depending how, letter, how many letters they are. So this one gets to be 240. Okay. Okay. So find the number of permutations of the letter kitchen. Okay, find the number of permutations of the letter kitchen if K, C, and N must be together, but not necessarily in that order. So right there, it's setting up three now. So you have K, C, N has to be paired together. Okay, and then what do we have left here? We have I, T, we don't need C, we have H, E, and that's it. So we have this one plus four more, but there's essentially how many spots? Five spots. So it's five factorial for the KCN group in all of these, but then KCN can be reordered three factorial because there's three factorial different ways KCN can be multiplied. So the difference between this one is exactly what I just explained. AI had two ways of being ordered. KCN has three times two times one ways of being ordered, which is six. So this one's five factorial times six for 720. Okay, questions on that? Three factorial because KCN doesn't matter what order, and there's three. The three factorial comes from the three letters, KCN. Now, last class, I actually got on this a lot quicker than I thought. Let's see if you can. How would I do something for the vowels that must not be together? How could I get that? Same thing as what? Good. So then how would I do that? Yep. Okay. Right. So you're doing the vowels, right? Together. But it wants them not together. So that's important. No, not quite. Okay, so here's how we do it, and Jake kind of started, but we're going to do the no restrictions, subtract the vowel. Because if you take, if you do when there's no restriction, and you subtract the number of ways to get the vowels together, then you have the vowels apart. So we subtract vowels together. Because you only have two options, right? Your options are the vowels are together or they're not. So if I do the, the whole thing without any restrictions, subtract vowels together, then I will have vowels okay. apart. Okay. So if you get a question like that, I'll make a poem and it says something apart or something that's like you kind of know what it's saying. Think about can I subtract things that I know from the original amount. So remember, the original amount is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the 7 factorial minus vowels together. Okay. That's going to be the 5 factorial or 6 factorial, sorry. Six. No, I think it's, it's six. It's six because it's one, two, th uh, three, four, five, six. The vowels are here. Um, it's not an A. It's an I and E. Yes. So we have the IE here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, the IE can be switched. So remember, it's going to be six factorial times two factorial because it's two letters that can be switched around. Okay, and so that's going to give you 5,040 minus 1,440. The answer is 3,600. There's 3,600 combinations where the vowels are apart. A couple things to like understand for number sense. I, th I think you could think about that. It's more common for them to be apart, right? There's more chances for them to be apart. Okay, and so 3,600 makes sense because it's definitely more than half of the ways, okay? Why well, I'm saying it's more common for them to be apart because I and E, there's a lot more letters in I and E. There's five other letters that could slide around in there, so definitely can keep them apart. <laughs> How many ways can three girls, four boys be arranged in a row if no two people of the same gender can sit together? So that means you have seven oh, positions. You have, a, you, have to, you have to start with the boy then because that way they're sandwiched because there's more boys than girls. OK, 
Okay? So, how would you figure that out? Is there seven choices? There's not seven choices. We're looking at them in terms of boys and girls. Because do you guys do you guys understand that a boy has to be here, a boy has to be here, a boy has to be here, has to be here. Right. So it's four. Four choices for a boy. Three, three, two, two, one, one. Going down the line for the choices. Okay, so essentially it's four factorial for the boys times three factorial for the girls. So it's four, three, two, one, three, two, one. It's 144 combination. The boys and girls could sit that way. Okay, any other questions? Okay. All right, example five. Last one for this page, and we just have a little thing about talking about repeated uh, values, the repeated letters, stuff like that. Six actors and eight actresses are available to play four male roles and three male role, female roles in how many different cast lists are possible. So this one to me, like as soon as you read it, you have six actors for four spots. I think permutation right at the bat. That means I'm going six, choose four. Six actors for four spots. Times, that's for the men, the actresses, there is eight of them Choose three. And so you multiply those. Okay? You multiply the possible male combinations, the possible female combinations. That gets you a total cast list. It's actually quite big. It's 120,960 cast lists that are possible. Yeah. Okay? What, so um, you can always use the fundamental accounting principle, but this one's pretty simple because st this stands for NPR. And whenever you have something with a total to choose and how much you choose, that's what it's talking about. So I have a total of six actors. They only get to choose four of them. So that's the R. So in this case, N is six, R is four. And for the female, N was eight, R was three. And so when it's laid out just like that, it's a little bit easier to see. Um, so it's just that's kind of what we go with. The other ones, we didn't do that as much because we had um, restrictions. So permutation is a little bit tougher with restrictions because um, you kind of have to weed stuff out. So sometimes fundamental counting principles is a little bit easier to take stuff out. That's why we were kind of using that in the beginning. Okay. Okay. So now that I'm just going to talk about this, they're kind of, they kind of overkill it, so I'm going to summarize it for you. So you have the word rows, okay? If you do four, choose four for rows, that tells you how many ways you can order rows. And here's all the orders of rows. Okay, That's all it is. And then what they're saying is they're going to replace that E on the end with an S. And now it's Ross. And you can see what happens is when you, when you replace that E with an S, then you get a bunch of repetitions. You get R, Ross, Ross, RSSO, RSSO. There's tons of them there that match that we're not going to double count. And so we're going to talk about how can we weed those out so we don't have repetitions. Okay? That's why that we talked about banana earlier, because banana's got a lot of repeating letters. Okay, so stuff like that. All right. I think it's in your final review actually that I gave you bananas and used in that one. So what they're telling you is, and I'll just kind of give it to you straight, is that you do the normal, if it's four letters, you do four factorial, you divide it by what's being repeated. Two factorial. So there's an S being repeated twice. So you do two factorial for the S. Technically, you do it for all letters, but all letters that aren't repeated are a what? There are one, so we wouldn't write those, right? So R and O is just one factorial, but that's a waste of time. You only worry about the ones that are more than one. So S would be two, so it'd be four factorial of two factorial. So you, you can see what's kind of interesting is that on rows, there was 24 ways to write rows. Then when we made the, the E and S, it cut it in half to 12. Okay, cut it in half to 12, because we divided by two. And then again, they went ahead and they changed the O to an S as well. And it cut it in half again. It went four factorial over three factorial. Actually, it's a third at that time. So it's four. It's three factorial. Why? Because there's three S's. 
Okay? So it's weeding out repetitions. That's what this whole section is about. So here's the formula for it. What this stands for, this stands for total number of letters, N. Why is this A, B, and C? Because that means you can have more than one thing repeat. Okay, we're going to talk about that in the second example with mathematical. Okay, so if you have more than one thing repeating, that one still is accounted for on the bottom. You multiply it. Okay, so we'll talk about them right now. Let's do these two. So Vancouver, we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 factorial. There is repetition of just V. 9 factorial over 2 factorial. So you get 181,440 ways to order Vancouver without repetition. Okay, any questions there? All right, so mathematical has a lot in it, actually. So if we look at it, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're 12 factorial on top. What are the repetitions? M, how many M's? Okay, A, how many A's? And what else we got? T twice? Is that it? I hope so. <laughs> okay, so this is all you do. Since M is twice, that's a two factorial. Since A is three times, it's a three factorial. And since T is twice, it's a two factorial. And all those are multiplied. Okay? So you can kind of, those are smaller numbers, right? Two, two factorial is just two. So I mean, this is going to be four times six. It's going to be 12 factorial over 24. That's what it's going to be. But you can put them in your calculator with that. It's these brackets. Uh, not trying to be mean, but definitely can't do this. That's not true. 2 factorial times 3 factorial is not 6 factorial. You can't do that. Okay. It's kind of like an export idea. It's kind of blocked with the, the uh, factorial. Okay, So 12 factorial over 24 is a solid 19,958,400. So with no repetition, there's 19 million, almost 20 million combinations. Yeah, 400. Okay. All right, two more examples. There we go. All right, Brett bought a carton of, uh, containing 10 mini boxes of cereal. There are three boxes of cornflakes, two boxes of Rice Krispies, one box of Cocoa Puffs, one box of Shreddies, and the remainder are Raisin Bran. So he's got three cornflakes, two Rice Krispies, one Cocoa Pop, one Shreddies, so that's five, that's seven, so that means he has three Raisin Bran. Yeah. Yeah, well, they had a discussion last class about how bad of cereals they were, but Cassidy likes Rice Krispies. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right, so it says over to Nibiri. He plans on having a box of cereal each morning. How many different possible orders are if the first morning he has Raisin Bran? So what that does is his first one is an RB. Okay, and then we have nine more, right? So what we have to do is we essentially just look at these combinations, right? These combinations, but we think of Raisin Bran as a two now because we already said he's having a Raisin Bran to start. So instead of looking at 10 factorial, we're looking at nine factorial. So there's nine choices of cereal left. And then we do the repetitions on the bottom. So we do Corn Flakes, three factorial. Uh, Rice Krispies, two factorial. Cocoa Puffs and Shreddies, we don't have to worry about because they're one. And then Raisin Bran has two Raisin Brands left. So it's nine factorial over three factorial times two factorial times two factorial. Yeah, the Always put the what? Total top. Yep, that's N to the top. Yep. Um, yes. Yeah, six times four, yep. Okay, you get 15,120 orders are possible for how you eat your cereal. Yeah, there's 10 boxes, but we already saying we're having Raisin Bran first, so there's nine choices. We lost a choice. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Last one here. Okay. Paul and Catherine are considering the following problem. Find the number of routes from A to B if the routes always must move closer to B. And that means no backtracking. Okay. 
Paul arrived at the correct answer by saying 12 routes on the grid. Catherine developed a quicker method. She realized to travel from A to B involves three units east, two units south. In her answer to the problem of the number of ways which can be done, E, 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 S, S, in any order. So she essentially called the directions, she put them as letters, and she's going to get rid of the repetitions. Okay, because what that means is, is like, if I said, like, if we said we went east, at, sorry, east, south, east, south, east, if I switch these E's, then it's irrelevant, right? Because I'm still moving east. Does that make sense? And so what does this mean? Well, that means she's, this is going east, south, east, south, east, got to be. That's what's happening. So what, he, what uh, Catherine is saying, that essentially she just knows whatever, whatever happens to get to B, I have to go three moves east, two moves south. That's where all these letters come from. So you guys should see, that means we have five factorial, because there's five movements we have to make over the repetitions of three east and two south. So five factorial, 20, 60, 120. You get 120, uh, yep, over 12, so you get the 10. Okay, and that's it. Solid.